Money's not the point. <laughs> Money is not the point. Serving God is the point. You might think you're going out for groceries and you might go out and get some groceries, but maybe you only pick up half the stuff you normally pick up because the Lord has you go and minister to other people. And instead of being like, oh, now I have to go out sooner and pick up groceries sooner, you should say, oh, now I'm gonna have to go out sooner which gives me another opportunity to minister and meet more people and follow God's will and evangelize and pray and lay hands on the sick and cast out demons because this all can happen in the middle of a grocery store and I've seen miracle healings happen in the middle of a grocery store I've you know been called to spread the gospel and to witness in the middle of a grocery store and to edify believers and all the above you know it's awesome it's awesome so we have to change our mindset to a complete trust in God. I am not worried about the fact that I spent my Friday night, which is the busiest night with Uber, making $5. I'm not at all worried about that. Zero. Zero worry about that. Trust me. It's not a concern at all. I know the Lord has it covered. I've seen the Lord ask me to give my last $20 and I have never gone hungry. I've given away the last bit of cash out of my bank account on multiple occasions by his, by his prompting. And if you know what it did, it built my trust in him. You think I care about the money in my account? No, because I know the Lord's going to provide. If he doesn't want me to be wealthy, it's not the time for me to be wealthy. If he never wants me to be wealthy, it was never the time for me to be wealthy. If he does bless me and be wealthy, I'm not going to spend it on my passions. I am going to use it to glorify his kingdom. I'm going to use it to bless people. If he asks me to give away $1.25 million to someone, if he asks me to give away $25 million to someone, if he asks me to give away $2 billion to someone, I would do it. I would do it. I trust him. Even if that would wipe me out, would that be a little stressful? Eh, maybe for a half second, then I'd have to get back in faith and say, hey, if, that, if this is your will, you, you raised me up. You'll do it again. So I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it. You think I'm worried about eating day by day? I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I don't care where he leads me. I don't care where he leads me. He's led me into the hood. He's led me to minister to prostitutes. He's led me to minister to thug, gangster looking people. And you know what? I don't care how scary they look, they're people. God created them. If they've become children of Satan, that's not their true nature. Somebody's set them free from that bondage. And if you have fear, God's gonna use me instead of you. And he's gonna use someone else instead of you. Or those people are gonna suffer because no one's gonna get to them. Love is free will. Love is the choice. He gave us the choice not to love him back. That is a huge act of love. Love is extremely inconvenient and love is extremely interruptive. And if you're not willing to be inconvenienced and interrupted, you will not complete God's will in your life. You won't. It's not possible. That is the nature of love. Think about kids and raising kids. It's interruptive, it's inconvenient. You can't just leave the flock without a shepherd. Allow the Lord Jesus Christ to shepherd through you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Have a great day. God bless you in Jesus' name. I love you so much. If you'd like to subscribe or leave a like or share, please do so now. And thank you for watching this video. Have an awesome, awesome day. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.